What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, J. Renee, with Prison Ride Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This evening, I got a brother on the name. He goes by Brother Delmont. We're going to chop it up with him, find out what he got going on, which is definitely a lot. And um, let's jump right into it. Hello, bro. Good evening. How you doing? I'm I'm doing uh, uh, Bert. Of course. So that's a blessing. I'm saying, I'm glad you're doing good. I mean, holding up out there, you know, like everything that's, uh, that's like everything that's going on. Plus, I want you know, just thank you for having me. For sure. First of all, first and foremost. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to open up with, uh, you know, I tend to open up with a little prayer whenever I'm on the phone and everything. So if you don't mind, I'd like to open up with a little prayer. I definitely don't mind. Oh, Lord, we seek God refuge from anxiety and grief. And we seek God refuge from the lack of strength and laziness. And we seek God refuge from cowardice and niggardiness. And we seek God refuge from being overpowered by death and the oppression of men. Oh, Lord, suffice thou us with what is lawful. And keep us away from that which prohibited and with thy grace. Make us free from what of what is besides thee. Amen. 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 I mean, I mean. All right, bro. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Can you hear me? Absolutely. All right. So, um, so how I like to start is, you know, I like for y'all to, you know, do a brief introduction of yourself, like just, you know, who you are and where you're from. Okay. Well, my name is Delmont Michael Blair. I'm currently, I, I go by Delmont actually because I'm in the nation of Islam. I'm from Baltimore City. I don't really claim no particular neighborhood anymore, you know, due to, but most people would say I'm, you know, from Baltimore City by the way of Park Heights, maybe by the way of South Baltimore, a touch a little bit of North and Lowell, but I no longer claim a particular, you know, particular neighborhood anymore as I, you know, I have experienced above that in my life. Okay. I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 40, I'll be 41 February 16th. I'm an Aquarius. You know, I, uh, I'm an author, motivational speaker, youth mentor. And I, uh, I've been in prison since I was a, since, really since I was a child, since I was uh, 17 years old for murder. Okay. All right, so, you know, that's, um, that's a lot of time to stand up on. How have you stayed motivated through all of these years? Well, well, you know, you know when you come to prison as a kid, you know, you lack really understanding of, you know, some of the things you do and some of the things you're doing and you really be easily influenced by a lot of things that you don't even really understand at the time that's influencing you. So, really what I believe is probably held me up is really, really the women in my family, mm-hmm. especially my mother. You know, that's, she's been like my rock. You know, it's all mothers really y'all, but she's been like my rock. And we kind of like weathered the storm, so to speak, together. You know, she went through what she, she went through her struggles, and I went through my struggles, and we kind of both overcame our struggles, and, and kind of like in the same sense when she was, you know, struggling with addiction, and I was struggling with, you know, you know lack of education and things like that. So, you know, as I begin to grow, you know, she be also begin to grow, and so just as long as I've been locked up, just as long as my mother has been, you know, doing her thing and inspiring me, and she's probably my biggest inspiration. Okay, shout out to the mamas. They definitely be yes. having my back, right? Absolutely. One more time. I said they definitely be having our back, right? Absolutely. Yeah, most definitely. So you say that you're, um, you say that you're a motivational speaker. So um, tell us what got you into that. And what kind of things do you talk about? Well, what got me to that point is, you know, see, you know came, when I began to gain the knowledge of myself, and then, you know, to look around, you know, like, it's like the more you learn, the more you want to do, and the more you know you need to learn. But it also, your know, education breeds separation, but it also requires something of you as an individual. So, you know, the more the old I got, the wise I got, I begin to look around and see the destruction and the deterioration of my people. And I realized that, you know, a lot of those things I perpetuated myself. So I became very passionate as an individual trying to speak to the younger guys because I used to be there. You know, I don't I don't judge nobody. So the things I usually speak about is kind of like rebooting your mind. You know, making, you know, getting a value for yourself so you can have a value 
for your people because you know it's, it's easy to say I love my mother but then disrespect wow. women that you encounter. You know, it's easy to say Black Lives Matter and then you pump, you pump drugs in, in your veins and up your nose. So, you know, it's like a disconnect to say, you know, to be able to say some of these things and really don't walk out on it and don't understand the full magnitude of what it actually means. So, you know, I did it. I speak about, you know, the respect of women. You know, the, the, you know what I mean? The, the, the duty of the man for the children in the neighborhood. You know, the, the children you know, gotta, you know, break, you know, begin to break some of these cycles. And so that's, that's kind of like what I speak about. I speak about what Islam has, you know, what Islam and Islam has done for me. You know, how it stood me up and, you know, put, you know made me the man I am today. I speak about, like I said, the power and the upliftment of the, the women, black women in particular, and, you know, the dirty to our mothers, how we can just abandon our children. A lot of times, not by choice, but by default, because, you know, conditions was put in place that, you know, we fell into those traps because we did not know no better. The people that was teaching us did not know any better. So them kind of like the things I speak about and just my evolution and the things that I have overcome and, uh, and the life-giving, life-saving teachers that I follow. Okay, for sure. Well, I definitely appreciate you doing that because that's part of our success is doing things like that, helping our youth and helping others to find that understanding. So I definitely appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You also said that you're an author. So, you know, I know that for sure. But, you know, let our listeners know more about um, about your books and what got you into writing. I was a kid, I kind of always was good at storytelling. Like, I'm, I was like the class clown in school, and I always been good at, like, capturing the audience of the people around me. So what really began to honestly make me right was I was in a supermax at one time, and I was telling my homeboy story. Now, I'm lying about this story, but I got him so engaged that when I told him that I was playing, he took a fit cursed me out and told me, you need to write a book, you pay too much. And so that really started me writing. So I went for the composition book, and then I started writing. And, you know, I had read, I had read certain books, particularly books like Dutch. Okay. You know, them, them the books that started me, that really taught me how to read. You know, when I, I read like Fast Track, you know, the Dutch, different little Atari Woods books, yeah. like the urban books, because I was into like the gangster thing, so to speak. Okay. I was infatuated with it. So anything that had anything, I wouldn't read, so one of my homeboys literally bought the book to me, you know, he didn't even, he was pitching it to another guy for me on my behalf, I didn't notice at this time, and he went in the courtroom, I'm like, who went in the courtroom, and that's how I began to start actually reading and actually taught myself how to read, and when you know I started reading, and then the guy told me I, I began to start, I, you know, I began to want to write, so... I went into the feds, met a good brother by the name of Andy Fields, another author, my man, you know, out of D.C. Love him to death, and then he helped me, you know, give birth to my first book, which is Body More Murder Letter, and he in turn turned me on to another brother, Brother Cash, and then I ended up doing Body More Murder Letter 1, 2, and 3 at the same time I was trying to do, because I, I, like I said, it's a struggle. So at the same time, I was writing, like, the educational, so to speak, books trying to give us people a deeper understanding of what goes on in these concentration camps. So I started producing my books, you know, writing my books, my hostage series. And then now, you know, I'm doing, uh, the, uh, I'm doing the birth of gangster series. And now, and also, I'm doing the movie. I'm doing the movie thing. You know, I stepped into the, I just stepped into the line of work as far as with the movie. Hold on, can I step? So, uh, all right, okay. So I stepped into the movie thing. You know, thanks to thanks to the plugs and thanks to the connection, always networking, and good people came into my life. So now I'm trying now I done elevated to the movie, to the movie scene. So that's where I'm at now. Okay. All movies. So how does it feel getting into movies? Oh, it's it's it's, it's been an experience. Both as you can see, it's educating because you know I'm in here trying to. I'm the type of person that when somebody gives me an opportunity, I like to try to. You know, nail it down. So everything that I'm doing now that's conducive to the book scene and the movies. You know, I'm in college. I'm in uh, uh, computer 
uh, community college for computers. So I'm learning everything about computers. I'm also in the shop where I'm learning how to produce books, make books, print books, frame books. And then I'm also reading everything on screenplays. Learning how to actually produce a screenplay, what works, what doesn't. And of course, you know, I like to take it and make it my own. Right, so, you right. know, I, I don't follow nobody else's blueprint in that sense. But I also I try to take it information and respect the people that have laid, you know, the, the trailblazers that have done it before me. Right. And then I take the ideas of, you know, my family. And I just take it in this from there. I just run with it. But I'm loving, I'm loving this movie day because it's, it's exciting to me. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, your movies and stuff that you have coming up. You know, your books are definitely on fire, so I anticipate the movies to be the same. So congratulations on that, on all your achievements. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. So what do you have um, planned for the future? Or, you know, what are some of your aspirations coming up? Yeah, just in life in general. Oh, uh, well, I got, well, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a process on my way of going back to court, you know, God willing. You know, I can go in here, you know, all your court, the Lord knows best going here. And, you know, they see, here's something I should have done years ago. I try not to really speak on it right now first right. because I remember, I want to, you know, I want to make sure I be able to speak directly to this individual's family first. Right, right. And, uh, you know, my, my, my biggest aspiration is pushing. I got a nephew. Doing his thing in the football, you know, that's doing his thing real major in the football, all over the TV screen. So I'm looking, you know, to get there, to go to some of his games. I got a niece that's in college. You know, I got a daughter that's trying to start a clover line. So my biggest, okay. my biggest thing now is everything I do for everything I do now is to try to help them, you know, push and motivate them because I'm, you know, I admire them. Mm. They, you know, they my inspiration. So I try to, everything I'm doing now is to try to put them in position That was really deep, bro. You said a, a mouthful there, for sure. That thing about humility, it always come and get you, won't it? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so um, how can the people get in contact with you? Oh, well, you can reach me. I do got a little Facebook, Elmar Michael. You know, you can hit me in the box or anything. You know, my niece will make sure I get it. I also, or you can, to me, you can write me directly at Delmar player ID number two eight six five seven three slash one seven seven fifty seven oh eight PO box five forty nine 
MCIJ, Jeff's Up Merlin, 20794. They can reach out to me directly. I respond to anybody. I accept all ideas. You know, to anybody that can go in and I can be of assistance to anybody or they can be an assistant to me. Hey, reach out to me. I'm here. I'm waiting on you. I ain't gonna say I ain't going nowhere because right. I got a lot to do. Right. And the whole world waiting on me. Right. So right. but for the time being, if you can drive shit over the time being, I'm sick. Alright, for sure, bro. So I always ask this, um, I know we don't got too much more time. Um, you know, for someone that has been incarcerated starting at a young age, what kind of advice would you give someone that is 16, 17, and they're facing the same type of experience? Oh, get education. I mean, I can't say that enough because I really have believe, I really believe that education is, you know, even the Bible says that our people suffer for their lack of, you know, for their lack of knowledge. You know, we don't know no better. So if you get educated, because see, for me, what education does, education, it, because nobody can enslave a man unless his knowledge is equal to or greater than yours. And this is how I see men that I used to look up to. Another, another situation recently, I won't, I won't tally too long, but another situation, a guy that I used to look up to like a dog. I'm probably one of his greatest disciples. He in here right now. 20, 20 years my senior. I see him not too long ago. I'm coming out of college. He's coming out of school. Still ain't get a GED. Surrounded by kids my age. You know, and I looked at them as myself. And I realized that a man can only inflict but his knowledge is equal to or greater than yours because see, all those things they used to tell me mm-hmm. when I'm reading this stuff now, I'm seeing it in the books. They got it from somewhere else, but I, at that time I'm thinking it's there. So education would be the biggest thing. You know, education and find out what it is that you like to do and invest your time in that. And then I encourage the people in the community that, you know, you can't just give up on these, on these young brothers and young sisters because so much potential that it's just misguided and misdirected. And be mindful of what you eat. And I don't just mean physically. I'm talking about the music you listen to, the movies you intake, because you are what you eat. Just like I was what I eat. I, I, I was what I ate. I did not know it at that time. So you have to be mindful of the stuff you're pumping into your mind, into your space. Mm-hmm. So that was be my biggest thing. Get an education. And this, you know that this is for lyricists. Mm. Hey, that's the biggest thing. Find a mentor, find somebody you look up to that's really going to tell you the truth and get an education. Uh-huh. That would be that would be my best advice. Yes. Yeah, that covers everything. That's, that's excellent knowledge. advice. Excellent advice. Um, again, I thank you for taking this time to chat with me, chat with us, the right. listeners. Yeah, for sure, bro. You know, you're a real solid brother. My husband is extremely fond of you. He says you're an excellent writer, you know what I mean, and a solid brother, you know, so that's always love, 100%. I really, I really appreciate you having me. All right, bro.